Golden Opportunities is paid for by Elder Productions. Hello, I'm Lori Steiner. Welcome to Golden Opportunities. Today, we'll serve up some sweet treats that are good and good for you. Then, we'll get real about real estate investment options. We'll explore an exciting exhibit that is super mad. Plus, medications not managing your pain? We'll offer options that won't hurt a bit. And we'll consider the catastrophic cost that comes from financial abuse of older adults. It's time to get geoing, so pull up a chair and join us at our kitchen table for Golden Opportunities. If you have diabetes or heart disease or other medical issues, your doctor may have prescribed a special diet for you. The problem? The dishes that are on that diet aren't exactly appetizing, usually. The solution? Finding a way to make the food taste fabulous. And that's what Pat Legrand has done. Pat is a special diet chef and the owner of A Touch of Sugar. So welcome to our show. Thank you for having me. All about food and remaking food. Yes. So remaking food sort of started out as a personal quest for you. So tell us about that history. Well, when both my parents became diabetics out of necessity and desperation, I researched traditional American favorites because that's what they were accustomed to. And I found that by modifying them, a lot of the foods that they love to eat because they're from the deep south, used to comfort food, mm -hmm. uh, could actually, they could still eat it, but it had to be modified. So after a lot of training and trial and error, I came up with a huge uh, repertoire of recipes, again, traditional American favorites that are tasty but healthy. Okay, and then you finally realized that maybe other people need this too, right? Especially diabetics? It's yes. a huge epidemic in this country. Exactly. And I didn't know initially that it served more than uh, diabetics, but as I expanded the recipe base, uh, the food that we serve is, uh, can be tailored to someone with heart disease, high blood pressure, high cholesterol, obesity. Uh, I also do the renal diet for people on uh, dialysis and that have kidney disease. Okay, so we can serve a whole lot of different special needs exactly. diet stuff. So what? So how do you work this? Are you, this is what you, you make meals for people, or how does it work? That's one of our services. I actually do uh, meal planning. Uh, I do. Uh, we can we make up a grocery shopping list and also uh, assist people with uh, getting a what I call a healthy kitchen, mm -hmm. uh, getting rid of the bad and putting in the good. Uh, we do a, attend a lot of health fairs. We're in big demand for that and uh, cooking demonstrations. I do a lot of educational work. I find the education is as important as the food, um, teaching people how to modify their diet. And then of course we do the meal plans depending on whatever the dietary restriction is, we create a meal plan to accommodate that. All right, gotta be helpful for folks like leaving the hospital and things like that. Yes, so. we do get calls. <laughs> <laughs> so how do you take how do you make a meal taste good when it seems like specialized diets are not meant to taste good? <laughs> right, and, it, and it, it does seem that way, but actually what happens is that there's a lot of flavor in unhealthy things like fat and, mm -hmm. and salt, and we've become accustomed to that. So when you take it away and you say a leaner type of meat, you lose something, and when you lose it, you're going to have to replace it with something. So what we do is we replace it with spices, uh, we may use, we use a lot of vegetables to flavor meats. Uh, we use substitutes to boost up the flavor, but decrease the bad stuff, the saturated fat, the sodium, uh, the carb count. Okay, now you brought something in here today that yes. can't possibly <laughs> taste good <laughs> if it's healthy, well, which is think. <laughs> macaroni and cheese. And we have a side-by-side -side comparison here, right? Yes, yes we do. And uh, so you'll notice that the color is different. Now you're getting Absolutely. ready to try the unhealthy, the more traditional version. Mm -hmm, that's what I'm used right, to. Right, this is what people are accustomed to, the butter, the, the salt, the and you cream. Can, you can now feel all that just going right to my Yes, hips, now this know? is the healthier one. You'll notice even by the color, it's different. Oh, wow, but it's very good. Which one has the most flavor? I think this, the healthy one The does. healthy one, and that's what surprises people. And the reason is, is because usually when people cook foods, uh, they 
pile on the salt, but all salt does really is make your food salty. It doesn't give it a flavor. But here, we've used a lot of uh, all these different, types of ingredients. These types of ingredients to make it uh, different. Uh, for instance, uh, it uh, it started with the cheese that we use. You'll notice this one is the dark uh, orange, which is a cheddar or an American base. We use uh, Parmesan uh, cheese, which is a lower saturated fat and lower sodium. Uh, we also use black pepper, which you probably tasted. I did. Totally yep. different. We mm -hmm. used onion powder. Oh. Uh, very, very unusual. But onion powder and Parmesan cheese were like they were made for each other. <laughs> uh, one of the biggest ingredients that we used was we changed, we used Dreamfields pasta. Dreamfields is a low carb pasta, one of the few that's out there. Another alternative for people is a whole wheat pasta, which is good. But Dreamfields doesn't have that different taste that the whole wheat oh, does. Yeah, a lot of times it's too much like for that. the palate, right. right. So Dream feels low carb pasta but tastes just like the unhealthy stuff. Another alternative to the Parmesan cheese is, believe it or not, cream cheese. Oh. It's also good if someone has a, a kidney disease or especially if they're on dialysis and has to watch the uh, potassium and uh, phosphorus. Cream cheese is a good alternative. Uh, instead of a lot of the butter, we used uh, uh, Promise or Smart Balance. Those mm -hmm. are good egg substitutes instead of the uh, regular eggs. And this is a surprise one, non-dairy creamer, something you would use in your coffee. Yeah, we, oh we my goodness. It. We use it in the mac and <laughs> it's cheese. The, it's the surprise it's ingredient. It's a surprise ingredient, <laughs> yes it is. <laughs> and you've written cookbooks about all of this. We've got a couple here on the table and I guess people can contact you to get more information, right? Yes, we have a, a big web website and uh, a touchofsugar.com and uh, all the information is available. Uh, they can also call us. We have two uh, business lines and looking forward to hearing from All right. the people. Let's get healthy. <laughs> okay. Modified <laughs> meals have to be healthy, but as Pat has shown us here, the dishes can also be delicious. We'll have Pat's macaroni and cheese recipe on the website, and if you need more help in creating tasty and healthy menus, give Pat a call. Her number's next. Find out more by calling A Touch of Sugar at 216 Three eight five zero eight zero six, or click to www.atouchofsugar.com. Next, rental revenue. But first, we've all attempted to type the quick brown fox jumps over the lazy dog, and that phrase does have a function. Can you spell out why we use it? We'll return with a reason in just a moment. Right now, the trusted experts of University Hospital's Seidman Cancer Center and the most advanced cancer-fighting technologies are in 17 community locations. That's leading-edge care, where you're most comfortable. That's UH Seidman Cancer Center. Right now, proton therapy, a revolutionary treatment for many types of cancer, is available for the first time in Ohio and only at University Hospital's Seidman Cancer Center. That's the future of cancer care. That's UH Seidman Cancer Center. The Quick Brown Fox Jumps Over the Lazy Dog is a pangram, a phrase that uses every letter in the alphabet at least once. It's a quick trick of typing to check that all keys on a keyboard function, while also showing the face of different fonts. Can purchasing property help you increase your affluence? Jim Lineweaver is here to help us get real about real estate as an investment option. Jim is a certified financial planner professional with the Lineweaver Financial Group. Again, welcome back to Golden Opportunities. <laughs> Good to see you. Now there's something that really feels secure about owning land. But is it really a safe investment? Well, not only land, but kind of the bricks and mortar that go with it. So what ends up happening is that over time, real estate in a portfolio can work out really well. As a matter of fact, if you look over the last 40 years, the real estate property index has actually outperformed the S&P. Uh, and it's actually like 9.3 compared to 8.7. However, it's done it with 50% less volatility. So if you look for people in retirement or so, or building up for their retirement, that may want something like a steady income and just, you don't have a lot of exposure to it, but some exposure, it could ride out some of those ebbs and flows in a mm. portfolio and diversify you pretty well. 
All right. So does that mean we all become landlords? You can. So <laughs> if you want to, you know, fix the heater and I'll get calls until 2 o'clock in the morning, you can. <laughs> not me. All uh, right. And most people don't. But <laughs> if you did, I mean, that's not a bad way if you're handy and things along that nature. And it's a good way to accumulate wealth. You can get some nice tax deduction for the depreciation and everything with that as well. And any expenses that you have go against that unit or that entity that you're renting out. So it can provide you some nice tax deductions as well. But if that's something that you didn't want to do, but you like the idea of owning a hard asset, then what you can also do is just hire a management company to do that. So, and unfortunately, you know, if you have something in the Floridas or the coast and stuff, and you're trying to do like a vacation rental, you could see as high as a 40% management fee, which is huge. That is huge. But more in the Midwest, and it's something like an apartment building. If you get a decent scale or something, you may be down to five, six, or seven percent that you're going to pay that management company. A lot more reasonable to get you also some more cash flow. To get you off of having to be that active landlord, and it's more of a passive amount of income. Yes. So, are there other passive type? options for those of us who don't really want to spend a lot of time dealing with the property? There is, and this is where you can touch base with your financial advisor, because there are things out there like there's REIT index we talked about earlier, there's real estate investment trust funds where they're going to go out and maybe buy a bunch of different properties. So they'll, a the mutual fund will pull a bunch of stocks together, a real estate fund is going to pull a bunch of properties together, none of the other management. May trade like a mutual fund, things along that nature. There are also types of real estate that's for accredited investors, so people with, you know, higher income or asset levels, they might be able to do some more private things compared to what's just out there in the public marketplace. But there is a way to diversify through that and you can also have some decent liquidity with it too. Uh, keep in mind that some real estate investment trends, trust, trends, uh, trust funds, uh, what they'll do is when they distribute the income, the reason why they can distribute so much is because they get a tax break. Mm. If they distribute 90% of their earnings or higher, they don't pay any corporate income taxes. So that's why you find a lot of these can be good dividend producers for people in retirement. Okay. How about a 1031 exchange? Yeah, this is where if you've had property, let's say you used that to accumulate your assets and now you're retired and you don't want to get calls at 2 in the morning, what you can do is you could exchange that to maybe another property, okay? Or you could actually exchange it to one of these trusts that I talked about, and then there's no taxes on that. It's called a 1031 exchange. If you identify the property within 45 days, transfer it within 180, has to be done by a third-party entity so you don't touch the money, mm -hmm. then there's no taxes involved in that exchange, and you can still get the income out of it. All right, last option is all in the family. It is, yes. These uh, for properties uh, that you've accumulated a good amount over time and you want to pass it to the next generation, there's something called a family limited partnership. So this is where the owners or maybe the parents can retain the general partnership shares and there's limited partnerships that can go to the kids and it's a great way to transfer assets and not pay a lot of taxes. All right, so there's options for real estate for us. There definitely Sounds is. good. Real estate just could be the real deal for diversifying your investments. To learn more, give Jim a call. His number's next. For more information, call the Line Weaver Financial Group at 1-888-313-4009 or visit www.lineweaver.net. Next, a classic comic book creation. Looking for places to go, things to do? Welcome to our community calendar. There's one week left to learn, by way of Legos, how connected we all are. Nature Connects, Art with Lego Bricks, boasts 13 sculptures illustrating our interconnectedness with everything and all on display at the Cleveland Botanical Garden through August 27th. To build up more information on this exhibition, call 216-721-1600 or log on to www.cbgarden.org. Did you know Superman took flight right here in our area? Creators Jerry Siegel and Joe Schuster are from Cleveland, and an exhibit currently at the Cleveland Public Library highlights the background and booming success of this hometown hero. Want to know more? Amy Dawson is here to save the day. Amy is Literature Department Manager at the Cleveland Public Library. So welcome to our show. Thank you, thank you, Laura. Our super show. Yeah. <laughs> so how did the exhibit come about? Well, in 2013, we had an exhibit to celebrate the 75th anniversary of Superman. It was very successful. People really enjoyed it. So we, we thought about creating another exhibit, and Mike Oshefsky, who's the president of the Siegel and Schuster Society, reached out to us and suggested doing an exhibit this year, mm -hmm. and that's what we did. And we really, we know that Jerry Siegel and Joe Schuster 
um, did a lot of work creating Superman at the library, that they oh, actually really? worked at the library. So mm -hmm. it was a perfect place for us at the library to celebrate both Cleveland and Superman. Uh, of course. Mm -hmm. So what's the difference between the first exhibit and then this one? So the first exhibit that we did in 2013 had a, uh, a lot of material from local collectors, but this exhibit in particular features primarily items from a renowned Superman collector, a fellow named Mike Curtis. He um, got his first comic book from his mother, who wanted to give him a, a, a strong male role model, and he began collecting when he was very young. And he is now the Eisner Award-winning uh, author of Dick Tracy, the Dick Tracy comic. Oh! So he donated his whole collection to the library, so that's the oh basis of this, of this exhibit. And okay. it covers three floors of the library. Wow, that's a lot. It Can is. you give us some kind of a preview of some of the favorite <clears throat> sure. items? So, some of the really the most important and interesting items that we have is for, number one, we have a large painting done by 1930s pulp artist H.J. Ward. It hung in the DC um, Comics office in New York from 1941 to 1959, and then it kind of went missing for a number of years. Hmm. And it resurfaced at Lehman College in the Bronx, and we brought that in. It's the first time it's ever been exhibited publicly. Oh boy, so good, yeah. good to see something brand it's new. Pretty, pretty amazing. And then we also have a model of the sculpture created by David Deming of the Superman statue that's planned for the plaza by the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. Oh, And that's, okay. again, the first time that that'll be seen in, in public. Okay. There's mm -hmm. also a special typewriter I hear. Right. <laughs> so we have on display um, the desk that was owned by Jerry Siegel. It was donated by his daughter, Laura Siegel Larson. And we had a sort of a typewriter from that era on the desk, but people kept asking us about the actual typewriter. Mm -hmm. So we reached out to Laura again and got the actual typewriter, oh and that is on display. It's oh. really wonderful. We have a picture up on it on the mm -hmm. screen right now mm -hmm. of that. Very interesting. I'm glad she did that. So, mm -hmm. um, what else are fans going to see when they visit? So also, um, we have a recreated children's bedroom, which features Superman material from top to bottom. We have memorabilia, uh, puzzles, toys. We even have a Superman um, telephone booth uh, <laughs> oh in, our, in our redesigned Brett <laughs> Hall, so it's really wonderful. All right, and how long is it going to be on display? So again, the display is free and open to the public, and it'll be up until the end of December of this year, and perhaps um, even into 2018. If it's so popular, popular enough, it's maybe so, popular, so yeah. Yes. All right, uh, great pictures, mm -hmm. great pictures. Thank so. you. Don't miss this larger-than-life celebration of Superman and of the two hometown Glenville High School students who created him almost 80 years ago. You don't have to leap a tall building in a single bound. You just have to visit the Cleveland Library. My thanks to Amy Dawson for a super special preview. Learn more by calling the Cleveland Public Library at 216-623-2800 or click to www.cpl.org. Up next, Pain Relief. It's time to get up and go, an exercise segment on golden opportunities. Hello everybody, it's Mike Carbon from Breakout Fitness, and today we're here to show you how to work the biceps in the front of the arm by doing a simple band bicep curl. You ready to go? Let's do it, all right. We have our band, so all we're gonna do is we're gonna place our arch of the foot, our right foot on the center of the band. We're gonna make sure our feet are offset so we don't lose our balance. Letting your arms hang to the side. All we're gonna do is twist and curl the bands up. Make sure that your elbows do not move. Your elbows should be stationary throughout the entire exercise. If you're alternating arms as I am, you can go ahead and just alternate to 30. Uh, if you're doing as Lori's doing over there, you can just go ahead and go to 20 because she's actually working both together. That's amazing, how you feeling? Great. Looks good, yeah, perfect form, good posture, you're breathing, excellent, keep it up. <laughs> All right, everybody, now it's your turn to get up and go. For your copy of the exercise booklet, send $1 for postage to Golden Opportunities, 6105 Parkland Boulevard, Suite 140, Mayfield Heights, Ohio, 44124. Trying to manage your pain can be a real pain but there are options you can include in addition to medications. Christine Kaiser has joined us in the UH Broadcast Center to share a few painless possibilities. 
Christine is a lead licensed acupuncturist and Chinese herbalist at University Hospital's Connor Integrative Health Network. So welcome back to the show. Thank you for having me. Now we know that there are prescription drugs that can help manage pain, but you've got a few other ways to decrease discomfort, right? That's right. Me, today I would like to talk about acupuncture, massage, and mindfulness meditation to help manage pain. All right, well let's start with acupuncture. Now, mm -hmm. Most people try to avoid needles, you know? Yes, they do. And as an acupuncturist, I have to say that my needles are 10 times smaller than those used for shots or blood draws. And most of my patients don't feel pain, maybe a sensation, but they all relax really nicely and take a nap and say, I can't believe I can nap with all these needles in me. Wow, so how does that work? So acupuncture is being researched now to determine what is actually helping with this pain relief. And we know that acupuncture increases blood flow and decreases inflammation, as well as releasing endorphins, which are natural pain relievers in the body. Okay. Um, another non-medicinal kind of pain reliever that you have an option for is massage. Now, That's right. Does that mean I can now go to my physician and get that prescription for my massage this weekend? <laughs> Unfortunately, not covered by insurance yet. Uh. <laughs> but massage is a great technique to help relieve stress and decrease pain. And the massage that we use at UH Connor Integrative Health Network is a medical massage. So we're targeting specific areas of dysfunction and helping that area improve blood flow and decrease pain. Okay, so the acupuncture and the massage work kind of the same way. Very similar. To yes. rev up your blood flow and, and kind of work at the particular area. Yep, encouraging your body to heal itself. Okay, mm -hmm. but you have a third option which is mindfulness. Is that something like mind over matter? Well, similar. Uh, mindfulness meditation was uh, created by a doctor. His name is John Kabat-Zinn. In 1979, he created a program for chronic pain using mindfulness meditation. And it's about paying attention to things on purpose without judgment. So we're trying to stay in the present, not think about pain in the past or what it might be in the future, but staying in the present on how you feel right now. It often uses breathing techniques to help with pain as well. Okay, so your brain really can help control your body too. Yes, yes, and your perception of pain. Wow, and the honor, the Connor Integrative Health Network here at University Hospital offers all of these options, right? Yes, we do. Yes, and we work in conjunction in conjunction with your provider or specialist and stay in contact with them, so everybody is on the same page in regards to patients' treatments. Good information that was pretty much painless. <laughs> Thank you. There's more than one way to help bodies manage pain and advance healing. So why not take advantage of all of your options? To learn more about the approaches that Christine shared, use the information that's coming up next. My thanks to Christine for joining us today. Thank you. For more information, call the Center for Lifelong Health at University Hospitals at 844-312-LIFE. That's 5433 or visit www.uhhospitals.org slash lifelong health. Next, stealing money and peace of mind. Hilltop Village Apartments is retirement living at its best. Residents enjoy a wide variety of activities and living services with all large first floor apartments, private screened in patios with beautiful park views, daily dining room meals, free laundry facilities, 24-hour staff, and so much more. Enjoy safe, comfortable independence at a very affordable price. Call today for a tour and learn how you can get your first month's rent free. Hilltop Village Apartments, retirement living at its best. Sadly, financial abuse of elders is not uncommon. It's even sadder when the abusers are the children or other relatives. Here to help with advice against abuse is my partner, Mike Solomon. Hello. So hey there, Mike. So what do these scams cost seniors every year? Well, according to the National Center for on, on Elder Abuse, over two million seniors are, are financially abused every, every year, and it's the number one crime against people 65 or older. It costs them around $3 billion a year in, in, in fraud losses. Wow, that's horrible. So tell me about the most common type of scam. Well, you go from low tech to high tech. So the low tech is you get something in the mail, says you want a prize or some money or free trip, and all you have to do is send in, you know, a small deposit and you'll get your reward. And of course, you never get that. 
Right. The other one that people are familiar with is, you know, telephone calls. So you've already won something, just give me your credit card information, social security number, some information. They try to pry it out of you. Obviously, that's, you know, you're ripe for fraud there. And then the high tech. The more and more people, you know, whatever age, older people are getting onto computers, and they're doing shopping online and banking online, the whole nine yards. And, you know, you can, your computer can be subject to viruses, scam, you know, spam, and then grab information off your computer. So you ought to make sure that when you buy your computer that you ask whoever you buy it from, whatever company you buy it from, to give you the latest in, in you know, spyware and virus protection. You ought to make sure if you have wireless at home that you have a firewall. And if you don't know what I'm talking about, which I don't either, <laughs> you know, hire someone to do it for you so you have, you know, all the protections you need to make sure you're, you're safe. And along those same lines, I'm sure there's a whole bunch of new technology scams going on now, right? Well, they always seem to come up with something new. The one that's common now is that you know, if, you're, uh, if you, you do your computer uh, shopping and they grab the information off your computer, your, your uh, credit card information, or you go to the ATM machine or you use your credit card at a store and someone nearby somehow they're able to grab that information. Yeah, or some kind of wireless yes. device. Right, so it, it's amazing what they can do. And then all of a sudden they're emptying out your account. So what I do recommend is, you know, at the beginning of every day is your just step, go online, check your credit card, check your bank account, go, you know, make sure it's, it's all there. Don't wait 30 days so you find out you've been stolen from yeah, a lot. Too late then. Yeah. So what else can we do to protect ourselves? Well, annually you should get you can get a free credit card report, credit card, uh, you know, credit report on yourself, and it's online there, the website and the telephone number. You can get that information, look at it, and you can see if anyone's done anything to your credit, open up a credit card. You can also, there's a telephone number again on the screen or a website you can go to to stop getting those junk phone calls. <laughs> and, then, you know, and then there's another website you can go to and another telephone number that's on the screen. So if you want to stop getting those free credit card applications, because oh. if those get stolen, someone might apply for a credit card in your name. And, you know, finally, if, um, you know, a lot of people are embarrassed about this. They don't want to look stupid, so they don't report this. Over three quarters of the fraud is not reported. but. You know, everyone falls, you know, can fall to this. It's, you know, it happens to everyone. It happens to the government all the time. Mm -hmm. So, you know, call this number, get on the on the uh, on the screen, uh, and report the fraud. So it'll help help to try to stop. Help that everybody sort of, else right. too. Yeah. So, don't become a victim. Know what scams to watch out for. For more information, call Mike at the number coming up next, or pick up the latest issue of the Aging Answers Supplement to Northeast Ohio Parent Magazine. Available free everywhere for an in-depth look. We'll be back. Call Solomon, Steiner, and Peck at 1-888-236-5173 for more information or to schedule a speaker for your organization. Or log on to www.ssnplaw.com. Thanks for joining us. Tune in again next week when we're going to talk about pneumonia shots. We're going to talk about um, your smile and grinning and AARP will spell out its worthwhile work on behalf of older adults. But until then, please remember to make the most of your golden opportunities. If you'd like to join our kitchen conversation, visit our website, www.goldenopportunities.tv. Like us on Facebook. Call us at 440-742-GO-TV or email us at kitchen at goldenopportunities.tv. We'd love to hear from you. Golden Opportunities is paid for by Elder Productions.